So, one disclaimer I need to make that this work is the result of cooperation with the Fusion IO, especially with Teran Das, which is here, and Torben Matthias. Without those people, this would not be here at the moment. So, I thank for them. So, I, the context of this speech will be as follows that I will give some kind of background. What are the problems we are trying to solve with this? And after that, I will give a proposed method. What kind of a method we are using to solve the issues? I will present some benchmark results and give you the current status for our point of view. I'm not going to talk about the Oracle's point of view at the moment. I don't know that much about it. The background, we have two problems on UDP for I.O. point of view. UDP has a double flat buffer and UDP compressor. Those two areas, we feel that it needs some kind of improvement. The double flat buffer is, basically means that you write everything twice. So first you write the page to the double flat buffer, it means I.O. It has to be synchronously flushed the disk. So there is a second flight. And after that, we can make an asynchronous flight to actual double space, space, to actual storage of the tape. So there are three flights actually. This is record for ACID components and especially the InnoDP crash recovery implement, implementation. It cannot handle it, the situation where the page is not written fully on the storage. Uh, we would actually add that it's not all database tasks. No, no, of course not. There are other methods to implement the crash recovery so that the, even if the pages are not fully written, you can make the crash recovery. The second problem we, we identified is the compression. So the inner DB stores those un uncompressed data in 16K pages, and these are compressed. The fixed compression sizes, depending on which you have configured, it can be 1K, 2K, up to 8K. And that, that size is, you have to select in, at the time you create the table. There is a key block size, keyword for that. The compression is performed using just a regular software compressor libraries, meaning to ZLab. But this is not all. It uses so-called update logs. So these updates are appended to page modification log at the end of the compressor page. And of course when this guy gets full, we need to recompress the the, all this is very complicated code. I don't know, maybe there is one people, person who would actually understand all of that code. And it's, actually it's not me. <laughs> I know the person who's, who had written it, he might understand how it works. But what happened with the log when you need to write uh, things uh, to this? Is it then also compressed? No. It's not compressed. But then you still need to write them. You might need to write the 16K. Exactly. So, what are the immediate compression drawbacks? First, the memory. We need to store both compressed and uncompressed pages on the buffer, meaning the memory. Updates needs to be applied on both of those pages, the compressed and the uncompressed. So basically, at the worst case, only half of your memory is usable anymore because the, the, these pages take your memory. The CPU consumption, we need to use that compression and recompression and splitting those pages at the page case when the compressor fails, all of this takes a lot of time, and of course, that 
rebalancing the envelope overflows, you will again need to, to recompress them again. Capacity penalties are not that good because we have to fix the compression. Page size, it sets the bound for the compression benefit. And that all of this has caused the full adoption of NDP compression. It's such, it's just so slow compared to uncompressed. So what we have now implemented and proposing here is that we try to solve all, both of those problems at the same time. And using these three implementation methods, we are using so-called atomic frights. We do the compression a little bit differently and use so-called operation dream. I will explain what this means. For atomic frights, we need some help from the device. An IO memory, non-volatile memory file system gives new primitives which we can use for this. So there are some different fright operators, basic fright, atomic fright, transactional fright, and pain resistant dream. Basically this means there is a normal POSIX call which you can call and set, a, set atomic fright set option for IO control and if the storage never support that, that, that it will return you okay. We are not, you are now using atomic rights. If it doesn't support some kind of error, code comes there. I have tried this on my laptop and it, it does give me error code. You can't use it. Sorry. Uh, a question on the last slide. Yep. Well, what's transactional rate? Uh, if, if expert can answer that, but I don't know. So maybe you can answer that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the transactional rate essentially comprises of the metadata and the data updates if you want to comprise it all together. You can essentially do a vector write of that information. So this is primarily true for file systems, uh, metadata updates that you want. So if and in addition to that, also updating the IDO for the information, all of this can go together. Okay, so it's essentially an atomic array. It's a scattered atomic array. It's, exactly. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, it's a vector. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> right, then the compressor. Uh, at this at the press, it is it, called as NVM compressor. I'm, I'm using base compressor name because it, it's this a little bit, in my opinion, better. So we are compressing pages. So we store uncompressed 16K pages in buffer pool, in memory. At the buffer pool, there are no compressed pages at all. At the point when you update the page and it goes all the way to ground to down the buffer pool, and the root blocks lost it up to the, the moment we are going to write it at the disk. At that point, we compress. This is very simple thing. There's just fun, one function called compress. And after that, you call the IO operation. And we, of course, we write only the compresses not 16K, only that payload. We need to align that, of course, at the sector boundary. <coughs> Similar when you read it, at the moment it read completes with decompress, and after that, we return it to buffer pool. All this is implemented using new page type. We need to discuss with Oracle how to implement so that we all are binary compatible. We are at the moment uh, not. And the solution allows different compression algorithms used. We are currently supporting the ZLIP and LZ4, and I think next week I will try the LZ0 if it is better than this. Let's see. Theoretically, I can support that every page has a different compression algorithm. So you can have 
pages com which are not complex, pages which are complex with Jetlib, pages which complex with LZ4. But uh, I don't know how much how usable that is. That would be really is for users that you would select for every page. I want to compress with this compressor algorithm. Maybe it's enough that you can do it per table. But it is possible. And especially that those uncompressed pages we need to support. Because there is situations when you can't compress page less than 16K. The last part of this is the dream operation, which means that we try to dream those unused 115K sectors from compressed page. So we try to punch hole file system. For those that are rabbits we are not really using from the 16k page. There is a positive call name for F allocates where it's parameters where you can punch a hole to file system. This is supported with for example X4 file system. So it's this is does not need support from the for CNI, but I need to I will make some kind of where the benchmark to see that the, does the X4 really support this fast enough? That's the question which, we are, which I can't at the moment answer yet. But at, the, at least they, at the, you know about the file system, it is fast and the system really reports the actual space you are, have been using. So the actual composite base. So this means that those 16K uncompressed sectors are now compressed and team provision is down to, for example, 3.5K on there at the class. <coughs> Here are the examples. So, the first example is a table named A, which is page compressed. So, we, I can, at, at the MariaDB, you can select which tables you want to page compress. It's not global variable that you can just enable. Similarly, you can select which tables use atomic rights with that atomic rights on option. Why is that not on by default if you detect that the table is confusion item? Um, Why do we ever have to put that on, on the table as an as a argument? Because mm -hmm. I'm not sure we can. I'm not sure we can detect that, that atomic file set on all the devices. That's why I'm the other. But the like order, the order said you get an error if you don't not support the yeah. atomic right. so you can detect it. At least the X4 and at the NBMS. I have not tested all the file systems. But that's what we should do. You should. I don't think we should ever have to create tables in the future. Maybe now, but we should yeah. get rid of it. Yeah, we can discuss about it. Yeah. The last example is the, where I have used the data directory direct option where you can specify the actual storage bay directory where you want to store the table. So you can define and then put it at the page conference and atomic bytes on. All right, the benchmarks. TPCC. TPCC is quite a heavy load with a lot of rights. That red line there is a, at the moment the NDP compressor. As you can see, it's, a, it's below 5,000 transactions, no, new order transactions per second. Quite stable there. Uncompressed is blue line, it's around almost 25,000 transactions. There are some dips there because the buffer pool passes happened there. And that the green one is page compression, so we, we can compress data about, it's about 15% penalty on this case. Link page, it's slow. And what's with the disk saving? I will come to that. Link is much more, there is much more read operation than, 
and TPCC. So it's not so IO bound benchmark, but anyway. Okay, the green one is the. I will try to get better picture for that. So the green one is again the inner DP compressor tables. And it's around, let's say, 20,000 transactions per second. The red one is the uncompressed. It starts very fast, but then when the buffer pool is full, and there are too many dirty pages, it starts to go slowly down, down, down. And when the garbage collection or write application starts, it goes down. This is a six hours run. So at the, at the six hour run point, the page compression and the Uncompressed are almost the same. It's the second line there. And we have seen that the longer runs, the page compress is faster than uncompressed because this is the right application, meaning that the, those near dirty pages that which you have to clean up there takes time. And these days we have seen that the LZ4. It's, it's not that good to compress, but it's faster to decompress. So the LZ4 is to higher line there. So conclusions from benchmarks. Standard in DP compression is 80% reduction in performance and 60% improvement on capacity. In my opinion, that 80% reduction is quite a heavy pay. But uh, well, our benchmarks have shown that the fusion and IO accelerated compression we have about 10% reduction on performance. And then the almost similar 60% improvement of capacity. It depends, of course, the compressor library. So the Zlib, it is just that 60% and the Z4, a little bit less. Yeah. Well, why would there be a difference in performance? That is, uh, if you're compressing or if the Fusion I.O. library is compressing or compressing, would it be the same number of CPU cycles? At the moment, all the compression is happening in MySQL. Not that the for boosting I am devices. But yeah, but it's all happening in the processor. As a, it's not being offloaded to the Fusion I/O. No. no. Right. So it should be the same number of processor cycles. Yeah. No matter who's doing it. So I'm just curious why there's a difference. No, the problem is that uh, the, the MySQL solution they, they actually have to have half the boost up or and the other is so complex. Oh, it's, it's, it's very complex. And of course, those atomic writes, which we don't need to write twice, the same data write three times, also helps here. So we have four times fewer bytes to the storage level. That also helps. Yeah, I think that compression and trims can be used almost any SSDs. 
But atomic price, we need some green new materials from SSD. I don't think all the SSDs at the moment support atomic price. And you need a file system like the one that Fusion I provides. It's a total open source now, isn't it? It's not open source. It, it's supposed to be open source. It is supposed to be open source. Is it that part of the original is open source? The original is open So you can configure it the way you want with the open source. Or I, just, I, I just got the impression, and it'd be wrong, that it will be open source. It's not. Okay, no. it's not. Okay? That's fine. Well, actually, yeah. We were, one of our guys was talking to them yesterday at the conference, and it sounds like they're changing their mind about this open source in the class. Okay, I didn't know that. I don't know. I have no knowledge about that. I don't have that knowledge about that at the moment. Yeah, but that's what we were told yesterday. So, if it goes to the file system. So, do you have to run the file system? You can run the raw device, can you? No. Oh, no. No, it's very good, but the management of the blocks will get so complex. You don't want to create a new process. It really supports that, but it, it, it was never... <coughs> I see. So, you, so it, it doesn't... Oh, oh I see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the current status. The beta release release was released with MariaDB Fusion IO 10.09 at Yesterday, if I'm correct. And we are supporting both InnoDB and XDB storage engines, engines and the same code basis at the moment on Perkona Server 5.6, that special build. Exactly the same code. Last time I was The change, the change is actually is about 13,000 lines of code. It's a little bit complex, more complex than the, what Oracle did because we have to store those table options on the dictionary. And that makes it a little bit more complex. If you don't need those, then it's much easier to do. Because you will just have those two functions, decompress and decompress there. But that dictionary code takes uh, of course, you need to divide that by two because in the DB, extra DB, we use exactly the same code base, basically.